All right, we're going to take a dive deep into this case where we're going to look at pre-surgical provisionals and Remexis guide module. Uh, I'm Wally Renee, and I'm at the Medical University of South Carolina, and I love this kind of stuff, so let's get into it. If you want to try to plan a case, design a case, wax it, and then have something made for the patient um, digitally, you could, you could do that with a number of different softwares, but this, this type of software is the one that I know and use and, and like. It's the Remexis uh, combined with the emerald scanner. So the first step would be obviously to digitize the arch and in this case the emerald scanner is being used from Plan Mecca and we're doing the scan pattern that I like to do for full arch scanning where it's essentially five uh, overlapping segments um, to ensure proper and most accurate alignment of the full arch scan. Alright, so once you get your, your digital impression you're now going to sculpt and wax a case. And in this software, you're able to do a mirror image of the adjacent tooth, which makes waxing pretty mindless. It's awesome. So we're going to instantly almost have an exact replica of what we need for that patient. And pretty much done here. All I have to do is take into consideration occlusion, proximal contacts. And to do that, I like to actually um, make my proximal contacts pretty light here, like a, this kind of oasis green color. It reminds me of kind of a Hawaii water, very beautiful color. And then you're going to throw on that occlusion, and I like to do the cross-sectional plane where I could see where that patient's hitting and adjust it if I need to. I'm also going to accentuate the CEJ, which is going to help me during design process because I know where I need to put my implant in relation to the CEJ and hoping that tissue will rebound down. So now we're going to um, fit that into the CBCT. So this is um, Promax Mid here taking this C at ultra low dose, 200 micron resolution. And we're going to select common data points here between the intraoral scan and the DICOM data set. And the software is going to do a best fit algorithm to automatically align those. Um, and then it's important to check that alignment. We're also going to bring in the tooth that we just designed with the mirror image. And so all that's coming in into the software. And now what we're going to do, we're actually going to highlight and segment out the root of tooth number nine here. And we're going to use that later on, as you'll see in Mesh Mixer, in order to create the emergence profile of the temporary provisional that we're going to then 3D print or mill, depending on what technology you have. And so in Romexis, it's really easy. You just basically color in the tooth. And it has some kind of feature where it finds hard lines. And so it's, um, it's a paint feature. And you could do it in... Uh, both coronal and sagittal views and, and get your basically your whole entire tooth colored in and what it's going to then enable you to do is save that as an STL file and so you can see now we've segmented out that root and we're going to hit finish and we have a virtual representation of that patient's root there. Okay so once we have that we're going to go ahead and plan the case in this instance we're going to throw in a strum and because I want to show you guys how automatic it is with certain implant brands and for example, Strawman, um, the sleeve heights are automatically calculated, which is it actually makes it idiot proof. And so you're going to place your implant. Um, you're going to try to do whatever philosophy you have, whether it's um, you know three apical to the CEJ and two palatal, and then kind of the three tool rule, um, which is what I've been taught and used. And now you're going to check your palatal, your emergence there, and um, triple check that you have everything correct and now I'm just deepening that a little bit because I wasn't quite three there so now I'm right about three and I'm right about two and so I'm pretty happy with that rotate and implant centric view and I think we're good to go so now we're gonna go on to the sleeve here now with Strawman you only have three sleeve locations that you could do and you can also rotate the sleeve and so I'm just gonna rotate the sleeve I like it to be um, so it fits in the space better by clicking on the sleeve and actually dragging the rotate. Now I'm adjusting the height of the sleeve and you just want it to be as close as you get to the tissue without touching the tissue. Now if you weren't using Strawman and you were using some of the other um, implants you have to know all these numbers in order to be a, able to calculate your distance to sleeve number. That's a whole nother lecture, a whole nother talk. But now into the guide module it's really simple. You're just going to circumscribe the area to which you want the guide to fit Make sure that you have um, your tooth not visible in this instance. 
pick what printer you have or pick a custom printer um, settings. In my case, I find the, the default settings be pretty spot on as far as the fit and retention of the sleeve. And then the sleeve holder parameters are default set to the Strawman sleeve. Now, if you were using a sleeve that wasn't in the library, you could just make whatever parameters you want. Once that's rendered, you're gonna use the tools to just trim that up and sculpt that however you want it. Maybe put some holes in so you could verify seating on the day of surgery and um, smooth out any rough edges. Maybe open up some space for irrigation. Um, do bear in mind that if you do that, you can actually cut a hole in the actual sleeve like that. So sleeve holder, so be careful. And yeah, that's about it. You might wanna stamp the patient's name on there. You could add a bar, it's not necessary though. I just was showing you guys that you could do that. And so stamp some something in there so you know what it is. It actually then will export that as STL and then re-import it into the models so that you could then triple check your burr length, your total drill length measurements and everything that you need, your distance to implant. Make sure everything's spot on. You could then export a PDF uh, kind of cookbook guide of what implant you're placing, what your total drill length is, your distance to sleeve, and all that kind of stuff. And it gives you some cool cross-sectional views. Now, if you want to take it one step further, you could also design the temp abutment that you're going to use. Now, bear in mind, there is no timing to this. Um, so you're just going to make a generic, and the temp abutments, though, are just generic cylinders, which is super helpful in the case where you don't have timing. And so you're just going to do an exact replica of your temp abutment. Um, and you're able to adjust all the parameters so that you could literally have now a complete representation of what your temp cylinder is going to be on the day of surgery if you're going to make an immediate provisional. And so you're going to be able to enter all these different parameters in and you're going to customize that. And now it's exporting. So we're going to be able to export everything. So, and of course there's at least uh, I think the model is, and there's no charge for any export of anything. You just buy the software once, which I like that. So now we're going to bring all that into Mesh Mixer, all those exports. And this is where it gets kind of fun. So I have my implant. It's just kind of a generic tube. I have my abutment. I have this extension tube that I created through the abutment. I'm going to combine those and make them solid. Okay. Now I have my tooth that I designed. That's a mirror image of the other tooth. I'm going to now make that solid. Okay. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually use like um, inflate and I'm going to sculpt a little bit around the abutment. I'm gonna use bubble smooth and I'm going to make sure there's no folds or creases on the intaglio surface of that crown. So now it's kind of cool. I'm gonna be able to take that segmented tooth and I'm going to make that solid and make a mirror image of it. Delete the one that was the original. Now I have a mirror image of that root. Now I'm going to use transform and superimpose that onto the tooth that I designed. That's in proper occlusion and everything. And I'm going to actually combine these. And so this is going to start to help me develop the emergence profile of that <clears throat> temporary. And um, you're going to be able to see through it and everything like that. What I'm going to do to the difference is use bubble smooth and hit control and it's going to erase anything that's, I want my original crown I designed because I thought it was super hot, so I'm gonna just keep that. Combine those, make them a solid, and now I'm going to smooth it up. So now I have a perfect mirror image of the root, and I already designed the perfect mirror image of the tooth. Now I'm gonna throw on my abutment that I designed, which is based off the exact abutment from my temp cylinder with my extension tube sitting out. I'm gonna smooth it and cut it. Let me make it gold for you so you can see that it's hot. And I put the magnetic feature on so you can see through. Now I'm just going to manipulate the slice pane right at where my abutment margin is going to be. Cut it and then use bubble smooth. Pretty much done here. You could manipulate this. There's a little seam. It's hard to see on that abutment, but there's a little seam where the margin is. <clears throat> and so I'm just trying to get it perfect to that. And you could use the move feature and drag as well. And within about five minutes, you're able to now have this tooth. And you're going to select the tooth, select the abutment, do Boolean difference, and you're going to import that into your CAD software. And you could um, 
mill it. You could 3D print it. You could do whatever you want with it. It's pretty cool. In this case, we're milling, milling that out. And I think that's a resin block material so that we could add to it if we need to. We could reline it easy. Day of surgery, the surgical guide snaps in, implant goes in. Um, there's the implant and there's the temp getting seated in place. So really cool stuff, guys. Um, Pre-surgical provisionals using anatomical forms. And if you want to learn more solid stuff about this, just you know, let me know. We'll make some more videos. Uh, you come hang out with me at one of my courses. Thanks.